It's a wonderful presence of God here this morning. And you can just feel the increase of His glory, actually. And uh, I just actually just want to pray right now, Father, that Your glory would increase in this place as I share the Word. Father, we ask that You would come and have Your way, and that You'd minister a spirit of life to people here this morning, that a spirit of wisdom and peace increase in this place. And that river of life, let it flow into this place, bringing strength, refreshing, grace, your goodness, and just the incredible, overwhelming love of God to overflow in each person here this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, this morning I do want to talk about how to get through a difficult time. How many of you have ever been through a difficult time? <laughs> I think if you've been living on the planet for more than five minutes, you've experienced a difficult time. And uh, so I just want to talk about how, to, how, how do we get through that. Um, and I was just running the other, the other morning, and God was stirring this on my heart, just all about people walking through difficult times. And I was like, God, what, what do you want me to share on that? How do we get through a difficult time? And I felt the, uh, the Lord gave me three Ps. Um, and it's just, there's something about this church. <laughs> it's got the P anointing <laughs> on this church, which sounds a bit weird, but um, yeah, a lot of preaching takes place with three Ps, right? So I've got three Ps for you this morning. And uh, the first P, when you're going through a difficult time, is perspective. How to get you through a difficult time is you've got to have the right perspective. And what is the right perspective? It's the kingdom. The kingdom perspective. The kingdom of God. And it's to have an eternal perspective. It's to fix your eyes on eternity. Son of Thunder just mentioned that this morning. <laughs> it's to focus. It's what are you focusing on? When you're walking through a difficult time, what are you focusing on? You're focusing on the now, on the immediate, on the, immediate, on the temporary, on the difficult, because if you do that, it wants to shrink you. It wants to shrink you into that, that difficulty and, and, and rob you and, and drain the life out of you. But if you have an eternal kingdom view and perspective to focus on, it will pull you and draw you through every difficulty you could face. Amen? Remember in 2005, God called Carly and myself to Hong Kong of all places, Hong Kong. Um, and we had never been there before, and we were 27 at the time. And uh, my parents had just gone over there and, and started a brand new church in their home, 12 people they started with. And uh, we felt God calling us to go over to Hong Kong and to support this, this church plant and to invest our lives into it. And uh, we didn't have any money. And we didn't have any visas, and we didn't have any jobs, and we didn't have a house over there, and we didn't have any schooling for the kids. Uh, we had nothing. And we said, God, like, this needs to be you. This better be you, because it sounds like that could be a disaster waiting to happen. Um, relocating with two young children, uh, uh, Renee uh, was six at the time, and Chloe uh, was two at the time. And, uh, and so we said, God, we need to know that if we're to go to just relocate our whole family across the world into a strange culture that we know nothing about and invest our lives there, we, all we need to know, we don't have money, we don't have anything, but all we need to know is that you're calling us. Are you calling us? Because if you are calling us, then we can have the faith. Then we can trust you for everything, for anything and everything, knowing that you have called us. And we prayed, we spent time praying, we fasted, we visited Hong Kong. And, um, and we both came to this conclusion, God is 100% calling us to go to Hong Kong, to go and reach Chinese people with the gospel of Jesus Christ, seeing people getting set free and saved. And, um, and so I said, God, we also need some words from you. Going to need some words, going to need something, God. 
And uh, so the first thing God said to me was, um, when you're over there, you're going to feel like you're going to die. It's going to feel like you're dying. It's like, God, why are you saying that? He says, but I'm not calling you there to die. Not call- I'm not calling you to Hong Kong to kill you, but to prosper you. I'm like, okay, all right. Okay, that sounds kind of good. That, that sounds good. He said, and it's going to be an ox season. You're going to be in, in an ox season when you're over there. And, you, and it's, you're going to get dirty and you're going to get tired. I was like, God, like, do you have anything better than that? And he said, but there's purpose to the ox season. Because you're plowing the ground and you're sowing the seed. He says, because there will be coming a harvest. Yes, it'll be tiring. Yes, you'll get dirty. Yes, it'll be hard. Yes, you'll feel like you're going to die. But there's going to be a harvest and he's going to bless. I said, but God, what about our children? (laughs) And he said, whatever you cannot give them, my grace will supply. And I said, that's that's good enough for us. It's good enough for us. And so we packed our bags. We took our family over to Hong Kong. And the first two years in Hong Kong was the difficult the most difficult time we've ever had in our life. <laughs> there was all kinds of challenges, cultural challenges, financial challenges. Hong Kong is one of the most expensive cities in the world to live in. And so we lived in a small, tiny, little 500-square-foot apartment, which is about 30 square meters. And, uh, and yeah, work was challenging. The culture was challenging. The, the language barrier was challenging. And... Um, the first two years, it felt like Hong Kong was squeezing us out, trying to, trying to squeeze us out. And yes, we were involved in the church, and it was, it was great you know, seeing some people saved and investing our lives into the church. But real life was just hitting us every day. And uh, it, it literally, we felt like Hong Kong was trying to just, just get rid of us, just squeeze us out. And uh, every day we had to just get a hold of God, but God, you've called us. God, you've called us to be here. Um, God, you, you've said we're not going to die, but you, we're gonna, you're going to prosper us. Uh, yes, it's an ox season. This is an ox season, but God, you've said the harvest is coming. And every day we were holding on to the word of God. Well, what words has God spoken over your life? When you're going through a hard time, you need to, to call out to God and, and you need to focus on those words. What has God said? Remember when Jesus said to the disciples, we're going to the other side. And then the big storm arose, and they all thought we were going to die. But Jesus had said, we are going to the other side. And so they got caught up on the storm. Their eyes just looked at the immediate, at the temporary, at the now. But what had Jesus said? And Jesus, he was sleeping in the bottom of the boat. He knew that they were going to the other side. And so, and so every day we were just relying on this word from God and we're pressing through. Sometimes you also, you just got to press through difficulties. Amen? So, sometimes you just got to press through. Like the, the word, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil. It says, as I walk through the valley. Of, you know, he's not camping in the valley. He's walking through the valley. Amen? We got to have this attitude. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to press through. We're going to get through to the other side. We're not staying in the valley where it's dark. And it feels like death. Amen? And so, yeah, we, we, it, was, it was a difficult time in Hong Kong. But we thought, God, you know what? We're going to put the kingdom first. We're not here for ourselves. We're actually here for the kingdom. We're, we're not here for ourselves. We're here for eternity. What we're doing in Hong Kong is affecting people's lives for all of eternity. When you see people being saved, set free, added to the church, transformed, that is kingdom work. Amen? that translates into people's eternities. And sometimes we've got to remember that. What we're doing here on earth, yes, we face difficulties, trials, hardships, challenges, crisis, financial storms, health storms, relationship storms. But you know what? It's all worth it because what we're doing here in the temporary now is affecting people's eternity. Amen? And the sacrifices and the pain and the sufferings we go through is worth it. Amen? It doesn't feel like it in the moment, but when you keep your eyes on heaven and on eternity and realize you're involved in a kingdom work, the most important thing on the planet, seeing people saved, set free, 
coming into the kingdom. Amen? Amen. And so we, we thought we're not going to put our children first. We're going to put Jesus first. And so we, we, were, we would drag our little kids to prayer meeting. And sometimes they would fall asleep under the chairs. We're like, we're going to be in the prayer meeting. We're going to be at church. And, and every, every Wednesday night, we're at the prayer meetings, praying up a storm. The kids, they were upstairs. They were playing. But they could hear 50 people praying at the top of their voices in tongues. And just God's presence coming and glory and, and his presence filling the whole home. And that's what they just grew up in. That was normal. That was their normal. Used to that. We thought we want our kids to experience this with us. So we take them to church Sunday morning. And sometimes it's, it's inconvenient. Amen. Like especially when Kylie, you know, would have to be up in the creche with the kids and they're crying and, and missing out on the service. And it's like, well, what's the point of even being here? I may as well not even come. It's like, no, we're here for the kingdom. And there's a little bit of sacrifice here and there. But this is good for them, the kids, and it's good for other people to see. Amen. I mean, when we were in Hong Kong, Kylie was pregnant with Asher because we had two more kids in Hong Kong. And Kylie was pregnant with Asher. And it was like Hong Kong toughens you up. Um, and uh, and Hon Kylie, she was ready to give birth and her waters broke. And uh, we were at home at the time. We are like, Kylie, we've got to go to the hospital. You're going to give birth. She's like, all right, first I just need to hang up the washing. And literally go outside. She's on the, the balcony just hanging up the washing with the big baby ready to come. She had Asher on Friday in the hospital. She was there at church on Sunday. I was like, Kylie, that's a bit crazy. It's just like we're here for the kingdom. We're here for the kingdom. And, uh, and, and the, the kids grew up in that. We wanted them to experience the kingdom. And uh, part of the, I mean, we saw amazing things in Hong Kong. We saw many saved. There's an amazing church there now. It's just hundreds of people and people getting saved, set free. God used us to um, just release a wave of the gospel of grace across the world. And just so many people getting set free by the gospel of grace and healings and miracles. And, and, um, and but I'll say this, one of the harvests that we saw is... Um, we, we left Hong Kong, we, like at the end of 12 years, we felt God saying, your, your season, your season is up, You've, your assignment is complete, it's come to an end, and it's time to move back to Australia, and, um, and we, like, we didn't feel like we'd seen all of the harvest, but when we got back here, Renee decided she was going to stay in Hong Kong, and she stayed there for two years, and instantly, without mum and dad there, her faith just began to soar. Because now it was on her. And, and she, had, she had seen our faith. And she would seen my parents' faith. And she would grown up in it. And all of a sudden she was getting a hold of God for herself. And, and just getting on fire for God in Hong Kong. And then she felt called to go to, to um, Sydney um, by the call of God. You know, if she, if she didn't understand God and know the calling of God, she wouldn't have been able to respond to that. And so she went to Sydney. And in Sydney she met her husband, the man of her dreams. And uh, just an incredible man of God. And um, his name's Timmy. And uh, it's amazing. Uh, last year, they're coming up on their first year wedding anniversary. They got married last year. And uh, I don't know, we have a photo, yeah. That, that's, that's our daughter, Renee. She's 26, and that's Timmy. And uh, it's amazing that, you know, when, when Renee was just a little kid, little child, we would pray, God... We would pray for her future husband. God, give her, give her a man of God. Give her someone that is secure. Give her someone, give her someone that loves Jesus. And we would, we would pray for him. And, and, and that man is the answer to that prayer. He, he is the manifestation, the answer of those prayers. And if, and if, um, and if Renee didn't know how to walk in the kingdom, she never would have met him. Hey, and the same thing with, with Chloe. We came back to Australia, and um, God had gotten a hold of Chloe's heart in Hong Kong because, because we never put our kids first. It sounds weird. Don't put your kids first. Put Jesus first. 
And I tell you, there's something about that. See, uh, uh, God has shown me, if, if you sort out the kingdom in your life, then, God will, then God's kingdom will sort out your life. If you sort out the kingdom in your life, then God's kingdom will sort out your life. Seek first the kingdom. Put the kingdom first. Don't put yourself first. Don't put your kids first. Don't, put Jesus first. Put the kingdom first. And I tell you, he loves family. Children are a blessing from God. Amen? Children are not a curse. Children are not a distraction. Children are a blessing from the Father. But don't put them first. Put Jesus first. Amen? Amen? And they will see that. They will catch that. And then they will put Jesus first. And Chloe, got on, J- Chloe just got on fire for God in Hong Kong. We came back here, and she went to school, and she met Jordan. <laughs> and they're in the youth group, and um, they both got on fire for God. And uh, they ended up getting saved two years ago, uh, ended up getting married two years ago. And they're coming up almost on their second year anniversary. And uh, Kylie and I are just so absolutely proud of our incredible children. And, and that's, for me, that is a part of the fruit and the harvest of seeking first the kingdom, putting Jesus first. Amen. Yes, there's hard seasons, and it's tough when you're going through it, but later on, there's a harvest. There's a harvest. And we've got to keep, we've got to keep that kingdom perspective, that eternal perspective. Let me just read a scripture, um, make this sermon legal. <laughs> 2 Corinthians chapter... Four? No. What is it? Yes, four. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Next. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Next. Persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. And then the the next verse after that, I think it's 16. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. How awesome is that? It's just a reminder. Let's fix our eyes. Not what it is seen, not on the immediate, not on the crisis we're going through. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on eternity. You know, every difficulty that we go through is an opportunity for God to show his power. Amen? Every difficulty you go through is an opportunity for God to show his power. And the other thing I want to say is that as you are experiencing challenges and difficulties in this life, I want to say this, as you fix your eyes on God, as you let God help you through those times, you are being strengthened. You are gaining experience. You are gaining wisdom. Amen? And, and so my point is, you're going to get through that time, and it's going to get easier and easier. The more you go through difficulties, the stronger you get, and the, the, the easier it becomes to walk through difficult times. And so that, that is, I believe that is a word for some people today. You're walking through a difficult time. But the Spirit of the Lord says, keep going. Keep going. You're going to get through this, and you're being strengthened. This season is not your whole life. Amen? The, the season that you're walking through now is not your entire life. It is just a season, and it's going to come to an end, and you're going to get through it. Amen? And you're going to be stronger because of it. You're going to be bigger in God because of it. And it's all worth it. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Perspective. Heavenly, eternal perspective. The second, the second point, how to get through a difficult time. Presence. Presence. God's presence. Get in God's presence. Get a hold of God's presence. In God's presence, there is strength. God's presence, there is peace. 
In God's presence, there is power. There's empowerment. In God's presence, there is perspective, wisdom. In God's presence, there is refreshing. So as you're going through a hard time, see, hard times, difficult times, they drain us. Dealing with difficult relationships, it can drain you. Amen? Dealing with financial stress can drain you. But get in God's presence. Don't forget about the presence of God. Amen? Let God's presence lift you up. It's such a simple thing, and yet we so often just miss it and forget about it. It's like we're just fighting this crisis on our own, just lost in the middle of this crisis. God says, seek me. Get a hold of me. Hebrews 4 says, let us approach the throne of, throne of grace that we might find mercy in our time of need. We might find grace in our time of need. And uh, I remember in the first two weeks that we went to Hong Kong, um, after about two weeks of, you know, just trying to look for jobs and schooling for the kids and, and uh, dealing with, like, finances and how we're going to find a house and, and, but God, you've called us, but, yeah, we're facing the realities. You're just facing the realities of life and difficulties and challenges. And, and then, after about two weeks, we actually just felt so heavy and depressed and oppressed. And uh, we, we later discovered that, Hong Kong, actually, the, the spiritual atmosphere of Hong Kong was actually quite oppressive. We just, we just went there naive and like bright-eyed and oh, God's called us. And, and then we just ran into like this, this heavy spiritual oppression. It was just like we didn't realize what it was, but it was just getting on us, you know, day one, day two, day three. By two weeks, we were just like under this, this heavy cloud, this dark heavy cloud that was just weighing us down and I'm not normally a depressed kind of a person but I just I felt depressed I was just and, and I, I remember we we're upstairs in my parents house I said to Kylie like how do you feel and she's like oh, I feel horrible I'm like me too I feel terrible I'm like what is this I don't know I just just feel terrible awful she said maybe we should pray I said oh I know but I don't feel like it <laughs> and uh and she said, but we should just do it anyway. I was like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> and um, so we went to the room and we sat on the bed. I can still remember it so clearly. This is 2005, nearly 20 years ago. And we sat on the bed and Kylie's like, do you want to start? I'm like, no. <laughs> I said, you start. And she's like, all right. And so she said, well, why don't we just start praying in tongues for a little bit? It's just, let's just pray in the spirit. I was like, all right. We're like, shaka ba yata ba shanda, oh rama It was like zero enthusiasm. But that, but that was, because that wasn't our heart. But that was what we were under. We were laboring under this oppressive cloud, this heaviness. See, see, sometimes a spiritual problem cannot be solved with a mental solution or a physical solution. Sometimes a spiritual problem can only be solved with a spiritual solution. Prayer, worship, the power of God, the presence of God. And so we started, we were praying in tongues. And we went for about a minute. And then all of a sudden we felt like a little spark of life, of something. We we're like, another minute, another spark. And, and we we're just praying in tongues and we we're feeling like life coming back. Life was coming back. And we we're like looking at each other. Oh, Shangura, my hand, Shanda. And then next thing, we just get this, this massive spiritual breakthrough. Something just broke. We just, feel the, we just felt something just break, this oppression. And then it just it felt like, like the dark clouds just parted, and the sunshine of heaven just like shone down again, and this heavy thing that was on our shoulders just lifted. We felt like our lungs just, <gasps> just filling again with, with life. And we looked at each other, and what was that? We said that 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 was spiritual, like that was something demonic or heavy. Or we said, "Wow, that was that was incredible!" In God's presence, God's presence just lifted that, just broke it. And and we 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 discovered in Hong Kong there was this heaviness. In fact, we actually named it. We called it the HKH, the Hong Kong heaviness. <laughs> and there was times when we were just walking through life and just everything seemed good, but you just felt heavy. 
just this heavy, unexplained heaviness. Sometimes depression is just unexplained heaviness. And we're looking for physical solutions or therapeutical solutions. Sometimes there's only supernatural, spiritual solutions to it. Amen? Sometimes it, depression is a spirit, and you just got to break it off. And you can because you're a son and a daughter of God, and you have authority in Jesus' name. And so, like, now when that stuff tries to come at me, I, just, I recognize it straight away, and I'm like, ah, I don't think so. You go in the name of Jesus, and instantly it's just gone. And that, that's how I just walk around in life now. I don't deal with depression. I don't get depressed. I could get depressed, but I refuse to get depressed. I feel oppression trying to settle on me. I say, no, I don't think so. No, go in Jesus' name because you have authority and there is power. Now, yes, sometimes there's difficult circumstances, you know, cause and effect, like, and it can be difficult and hard and that can be weighing you down and you've got to, you've got to sort those things out. Amen. Sometimes there, you can explain depression through situations and circumstances and when you sort them out, like something just lifts off you. But there's other times when it is definitely spiritual. And, and no matter what you try, it doesn't lift until you get in the spirit and you get in God's presence and you smash that stuff off. Amen? Um, I had a scripture, Acts chapter 4. Um, yeah, let's just read it. It's uh, J- uh, Peter and John. They had just been persecuted for preaching the gospel. They'd just seen 2,000 people getting saved. Someone got healed. It was amazing. Giving their lives for the kingdom. Serving the kingdom. And it's, it's amazing when you sign up for the kingdom and you just think, oh, everything's just going to be so easy. God's with us. It's like, no, the devil hates you. It's like sometimes all of hell comes out against you. And you think, why is just chaos and craziness happening in my life? It's like because you put your hand up to serve God and to live for the kingdom. And the devil doesn't like that. And so it, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. Like we're signed up for it and it's worth it. No matter what opposition we face, it's worth it. Amen. Paul got stoned, like not with marijuana, but with stones for preaching the gospel. He got stoned for preaching the gospel. Sometimes we get offended because someone said something bad about us on Facebook. We got a bad comment on Instagram or Facebook, and we're like, oh, my gosh, and we're like depressed for three days. Paul got stoned for preaching the gospel. And then the church prayed for him, and he got up, and he just went straight back into the city, kept preaching The gospel, another day in the office for Paul, the kingdom. Amen? We need to develop some of that strength. And that's what difficulty does. When you fix your eyes on Jesus, when you persevere and walk through, you develop strength and fortitude inside of you. Amen? And and, and then things do, can get easier. You can deal with more difficult circumstances because you've got this reservoir of strength inside of you. Amen? Some of you think you're not doing very well in life. And I want to say, you're probably doing a lot better than you think you are. You're probably doing much better than you think you are because you feel like you're just going around, but actually you, you're spiraling up in the kingdom. Amen? Because you're working through stuff and it's developing strength. It's developing fortitude in you and you're getting stronger and you're getting stronger. So give yourself more credit. Amen? And so they were persecuted for preaching the gospel and and they were ordered by the religious Pharisees of the day not to preach the gospel anymore. And they were beaten up. They beat them up for preaching the gospel. They said, you will not preach the gospel anymore. And so Peter and John went back to the church. They reported all of this. It says, on their release, Acts 4.23, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they all got together and started to cry and sulk and pat each other on the back, say, oh, no, everything, this is just terrible. Serving God is just terrible and it's so hard and poor us and let's have a pity party and let's feel sorry for ourselves. No, they didn't. What, what did they do? They raised their voices together in prayer to God. They went straight to God. Amen. Don't Get into a pity party when you're walking through difficult times. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Don't go down into the pit of pity pity it's a pit amen because when you go down there it's harder to get up it's harder to get out of that pit i just refuse to go down into a pit of self-pity and feeling sorry for myself sometimes i'm tempted i'm just so tempted i'm tempted to just feel sorry for myself (laughs) poor me life's so hard everything's just against me and so difficult and you just like 
down this pit and there's stuff just piling up on top of you. HKH, Hong Kong heaviness, Australia heaviness, Gore heavy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no, just, just heaviness. I don't know why I pick on Gore. When we came back from Hong Kong, we came to Gore and we lived in Gore for four years and Gore ministered to us. From the busyness and the craziness of Hong Kong, we went back to slow little Gore, sit to slow, slow Gore, and it was just what we needed. It was perfect. I love the Murray, running along the Murray. And uh, anyway, um, don't go down into a pit of self-pity. It's harder to get out. When you're going through a hard time, the first thing you do, just run straight to God. Seek his face. Get in his presence. They, they, they got together and they prayed, Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? This whole world is just raging and people are just plotting in vain. But God is in control. God is the one who created all of this. Jesus is the king of all kings. He is the one who's going to wrap this world up and separate the sheep and the goats on his left and right side. He is the one who's going to judge the nations. And the righteous will enter into eternal life, but the unrighteous into eternal death. Amen? The, the, but the nations just think that they're so smart and so clever, and they're just raging and they're plotting in vain, even though the whole time Jesus is the King of kings, and he is in control. He says, why do the nations rage and the people's plot in vain? Next verse. The kings of the earth rise up, and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. They didn't, difficulty didn't cause them to shrink back. In fact, it actually caused them to step up. Every difficulty you go through is an opportunity for you to step up into greater places in God. Amen? So don't run from your calling from your destiny that God has given you. Don't take the easy way out. Stay on course. Stay on track. Keep doing what God has called you to do. Get a hold of God. Amen. And he will get you through this time. And not only that, greater things are going to happen. Um, next verse. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. I believe that that actually happened because I believe the Bible. I don't believe the Bible's lying. I believe the Bible is the word of God and it's truth. And I believe when after they prayed, the place was shaken, physically shaken. Perhaps an earthquake. Imagine that after you prayed. The place where you're praying is shaken. Imagine you're just going through the worst time of your life, and then you pray to God, and all of a sudden, the ground just shakes. Oh, my goodness, God is here. Where their meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the presence of God. Presence, they were filled with the presence of God and spoke the word of God boldly. Um, I think that's, that's the last verse. And so they went out, and they spoke the word of God boldly. They didn't allow difficulty to intimidate them or distract them. But they got a hold of God, and God pulled them through, and they went on to greater things. The third thing on how to get through a difficult time. So the first thing is perspective. You've got to keep a kingdom perspective, an eternal perspective. The second thing is get into the presence of God. Get a hold of God. The third thing is people. People. When you're going through a hard time, you need people around you. Community. Kingdom community, a.k.a. the church. Amen? God puts the lonely in family. God, the church is God's idea. And yes, there's some bad representations of it on the earth. Can I get a good amen? <laughs> Unfortunately, because humans are involved, 
Anytime humans are involved, we just can mess things up. It's by the grace of God that uh, this is just a loving community. This church is a loving community that cares for people, that is called with a purpose, that has a calling, that has a destiny. We are called by God here in Victor Harbor to reach the Flurio with the gospel, to see people saved, born again, set free. Amen? They're, they're on their way to hell, on their way to judgment, destruction, death. And, and, and they're living in hell while they're on their way there. And all of a sudden, a baysider cuts in on them. <laughs> Says, guess what? Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you. Jesus is calling you to himself. Jesus has a purpose and a destiny for your life. Your life is not just some random, meaningless accident that's just empty and lifeless and has no meaning and purpose. No, God knows you. He loves you. He created you. You are precious to God. You are important to God. Now come and give your life to Jesus. Come and surrender your life to Jesus. In fact, come and die so that Jesus can raise you up into life, eternal life. And, and see people saved. See people saved and added. We're a part of this community that has a calling from God to see this, this area and beyond reached with the gospel. Amen? And so the enemy hates that, and he, and he targets us. He tries to bring different things across our path and in our life. Challenges, stress, crisis, death of loved ones, sickness, financial, all different kinds of things to get us all consumed and distracted and caught up with the immediate and the now. But God says, fix your eyes on eternity. Look and see the kingdom. See that I have called you, that your life is bigger than this thing that you're going through right now. You are called to more than just struggling through this. You are called to, into the kingdom, and you are called into a kingdom community. And so, see, the, the enemy wants to try to isolate us, but the truth is we need each other. We, we need each other. And, and, and God gives that picture, you know, of the body, in, in Ephesians 4, you know, the body is built together. The, he's speaking about the church. It's, the, the church is built together, and there's, you know, the eyes and the arms and the legs, and, and, and not everyone is the same thing. We all have different callings, different personalities, different giftings, but God brings us all together as, as one body, and each part receives from the other, from the body, but each part also gives to the body, supplies their gifting, their, their talents, their presence is actually supplying. And so when you're in a church, when you're in a local, when you're in the body, you are receiving, but you are also giving. And there's people that need you. And so sometimes we can get so caught up in our own little bubble and, and our own issues and problems and forget that there's people that need us. And that's not a, it's not a guilt thing. It's actually an encouraging thing. I'm like, there's actually, I, I'm, I'm important. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm important. People need me. The church needs me. Amen? Amen? Loving, caring community. We encourage each other. And, and also we, we hold each other accountable to our destiny. See, we don't, see, there, there's some some people's version of accountability is, is we, 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 we look through your life and we try to find every sin that you're committing. And then we expose it in front of the church. And then you're like, oh, no, oh, I, better, I better sort myself out. I just don't think God is involved in that somehow. When I read the Bible and I, I read about grace, where, where it actually says, I'll remember your sins no more. Hmm. Hmm. And it says, uh, I'm no longer counting in Christ. God has forgiven us, and he's no longer counting our sins against us. And he separated our sins as far as the east is from the west. And so accountability is not about trying to expose people. It's about saying to people, hey, you are called to greatness. There is a destiny on your life. What are you doing getting caught up? In all these things, these temporary things, you're being distracted. You're being pulled away. Why are, you, why are you isolating yourself? Why are you withdrawing and just trying to do it all on your own? No. 
Come and be part of the body. Come and be part of your family, a part of the church. You are, you are, you are get back on track. Amen? And so it's, it's calling people and holding them accountable to their destiny. Amen? And it might be uncomfortable, don't like it, like when people show like you're being distracted, but it's, we do it out of love. Why? Because we believe in each other. Amen? I believe in my children. I believe God has called them. And so if I challenge them, it's not because I'm trying to hurt them. It's because I want to see them walking in their destiny. Amen? And we're, and we're also an encouraging community. Oh, my goodness. The church needs encouragers. People, it needs more encouragement. People just need more encouragement. You know, when you're dealing with crap in life, <laughs> you just need loving people around you that can just encourage you. Just the Spirit of God speaks through them. And they, they, by God's anointing, they just see what's going on in your life. And they just begin to speak words of life and encouragement and strength. That is so godly. Amen? That is so vital and important. And I want to just read one final scripture. We'll, we'll end with this scripture, Hebrews 10, 23. It says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. You know what spurring is? The cowboys have the spurs to the horse. Spur, come on, come on, giddy up, giddy up. <laughs> spurring, let's spur one another on. You, you don't do that to hurt each other. We do it to, to, to stir each other, amen? To stir each other towards love and good deeds and the calling and the future that we have. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Next one. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. And, and when I read that, let's not give up meeting together, I don't see that as a, a guilt trip. You know, oh, I missed a Sunday. Oh, you know, it's just, there's no guilt trip in it. I see it as, as an encouragement. When you see it from eternity, God is saying, don't, don't lose sight of the calling and the destiny of the church, the mission of the church, the plan of the church. God has, the church is God's plan A to reach this world with the gospel. Go and make disciples of all nations. You know, of all nations. Take the gospel to every nation. Make disciples. How are we going to fulfill the Great Commission? Just random people, just me and Jesus. Just, just No, through the church. Jesus gave himself up for the church to build his church. And so I, I don't see that as a, as a guilt trip. I see it as a calling. We're called to be a part of a, a powerful, loving community where we, we walk out our destiny and our calling in God through this community. And the word's there, but encouraging one another. Encouraging. The Bible stirs us to encourage one another. Amen? It's just... There's two parts to that. We just need to be an encouraging community and look for people that just need an encouraging word. There's some people that are dealing with stuff. And if you see that, just try to pick up. What I do is I say, Holy Spirit, just reveal. Give me something for them. Give me something that will encourage them. And uh, even sometimes if I'm praying for people, Holy Spirit starts to show me things about them, not exposing them, but just areas that they just need some life and some grace and God's touch, God's care. And, uh, and you just begin to speak that over them. Um, you know, when, when my mom went through her aneurysm, when she suffered an aneurysm, she was in hospital for, you know, intensive care, 33 days in hospital for many days after that, and then in rehab. And it was just touch and go. We didn't know what she was gonna, if she was going to get better, if she was going to be brain damaged. A lot of you know the story, so I won't go over that. But um, it was about the 10th day in, and mum was basically in a coma. And it's, it's, it's a very difficult thing to see and to, to walk through. And about 10 days in, I was at my lowest point. I was just feeling very discouraged and heavy. And um, I got a message from 
a, a lady named Janet Mills from the other side of the planet. She just sent me this voicemail, and it was just an encouragement to just to keep standing and to have faith and to trust God. And God's got your mum in his hands. Your mum's going to be okay. And don't give up hope. Don't give up faith. Just stay stirred. And, and uh, as I listened to those words, it just breathed fresh faith and life back into me. And I felt this, this vigor come back over me. And the strength and a spirit of faith actually came over me. And it just smashed off whatever that heaviness was. It just, it just smashed it off. And suddenly I just felt strong again and stirred. And I, I made a video and I, I said, guys, God has got my mom and, and please let's just pray. And, and then there was people all over the world just praying, sending videos of like, we're praying for your mom at prayer meetings. It was just like, oh, look at that, Jesus. It was, just, it was just wild. Like, But if I was just isolated and on my own, you know, I'd just be there just struggling through it by myself. Thank God for the caring community, the praying community, the loving community, the church community where we just carry each other especially at our lowest points amen amen so perspective presence and people will help us to get through every difficult time every difficult season that we could face in this life i'd like to just pray for you guys and uh, i actually just really want to pray just yeah just a breakthrough in people's lives and also just uh, a release of a spirit of joy. Could, could we just get um, someone to come up and just minister on the keyboards? Um, wanna, what, can I ask you just to stand? I don't even know what the time is, but if anyone does need to go, please feel released. But I uh, just want to spend a bit of time just getting in God's presence. Um, yeah, I've sort of been umming and ahhing also whether to do this or not. Um, but I just, I just, I've actually, I've had a word for you, Jordan, <laughs> on my heart for a few weeks now. Um, and uh, I, I felt like God saying to me that, you know, Jordan, you feel like you're in a, a season of being overlooked. And, um, and God, God says that I see you and I haven't overlooked you. And I know that there's situations and different people and that just, just overlooking you. And not actually seeing who you are and the quality man that you are. Jordan is also an answer to prayer of Kali and myself. He's, a, he's an extraordinary man of God. And the perfect man for our daughter, Chloe. <laughs> but I, I felt the word of God to you, Jordan. I feel God saying, you will see the goodness of God in your generation. You will see the goodness of God in your generation. And even though you might be in a season of being overlooked, feeling like you're overlooked, God says, press through. Press through this season because I'm developing character. I'm developing fortitude in you. Wisdom. And uh, there is coming a time God's going to elevate you and you're going to see his goodness. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just close our eyes? Maybe just lift your hands to God just as an act of surrender. Holy Spirit, we just welcome your presence, the spirit of peace, the spirit of life, that you would come and just breathe fresh life over us here this morning. Anyone that is just carrying weights and burdens and heaviness, Holy Spirit, would you just come, and just lift those burdens off them right now, just the ease of your grace, the ease of your presence, just lifting those burdens off right now in Jesus name and we speak refreshing and we speak life over you we speak the breath of God breathe his breath of life in Jesus name and Father I just pray for a kingdom 
eternal perspective coming back to us here this morning. That you would just strengthen it in our heart, in our spirits. Just lift up our eyes and help us to see heaven, to see eternity. And that this very difficulty we're walking through now, what is it going to matter in the light of eternity? Are we going to be so worried about it a thousand years from now? 10,000 years from now? Or, or, or are we just going to be caught up and consumed by the glory and the majesty of Jesus in heaven? This morning, Lord, we want to say that the sacrifice, the suffering is worth it. For it is momentary, but we know there is coming a time where we will be raised up with Christ to the heavenlies. We will be with him forever and ever and ever where there is no more pain, no more suffering, no more tears, but just joy, perfect joy, perfect peace, perfect glory. Thank you, God, that our life has meaning, it has purpose. Not, not, not because we hope it does, but because it does. Because Jesus, you are real. Your salvation is real. And eternity is real. Everything exists because of you. It cannot exist by itself. It is because of you. This morning, some of you need to just surrender to Jesus. You've been running from him. You've been fighting, been resisting. You've been hiding behind agnosticism. Oh, it's just too confusing. I don't know. I don't understand. Stop hiding. God lovingly says to you, stop hiding. Come to me. Come to me because I am good and I love you and you are valuable and precious and important to me. Don't go on what the world tries to tell you about God. Let God draw you to himself today. I can tell you he is the most loving, kind, gracious, good father. <laughs> he is so awesome. And he will raise you up. He will lift you up. Come to Jesus this morning. If you're here in this place and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, all you need to do is say, Jesus, I believe. I confess you are Lord. I give you my heart. I give you my life. Make me a child of God. The Bible says that anyone who calls on the name of Jesus will be saved. You will receive the gift of eternal life. You can never earn it. There's nothing you can do to earn it. It is a gift. It is the gift of eternal life that we receive through Jesus. And all you have to do is just have faith and just believe and receive him into your life. And I tell you, he will make you alive. He will get a hold of your life. He will give you purpose and destiny. He will help you to walk through hard, difficult, challenging times. And he will be with you. By your side, the Holy Spirit is called the, the helper. He comes alongside of us and he helps us. <laughs> through everything we could walk through, he is right there with us. So I just want to encourage you. Give your life to Jesus this morning. It doesn't have to be a big fanfare moment. It's just between you and God, just in your heart. You're just saying, Jesus, I surrender. When I was 17, I got down on my hands and knees in my bedroom. And I said, that's it, Jesus, I give up, I surrender. I am yours. Take my life. Have me. Have all of me. I give you my life. I tell you, that day, something changed inside of me. I got born again. He set me free. I've been living for him ever since, and it's the best decision I, ne I ever made. I've never regretted it. Right now, Lord, we just pray for that spirit of life to come upon people. 
that, Lord, you would lift off a garment of heaviness and you'd give them a garment of praise, that we'd lift up our eyes and see the King of kings seated on a throne, <laughs> see how glorious and mighty you are. God, we thank you that you give us grace and mercy and help in our time of need, that we don't run away from it, we don't bail out of it, but you help us to get through it. And so we just thank you for strength this morning, no matter what people are facing. God, I pray supernatural strength right now to walk through their time, their difficult season. And perhaps there's some that are not walking through anything difficult right now, but I guarantee one day you will, because that's life. Life is what happens when we've planned for something else. And so you need this just as much as anyone else. We thank you, Lord. And Lord, I also just pray for a spirit of joy, the Holy Spirit of joy, that refreshing presence of joy. You turn our mourning into laughter. You turn our mourning into laughter. And even those times when we're facing the most challenging things, the enemy has thrown everything he can at us, every missile, every attack he's launched at us. And when the smoke clears, he just sees us laughing under the presence and the power of God. And it strikes terror into the enemy's camp. <laughs> they shouldn't be laughing. The Bible says that God sits on his throne and he laughs at his enemies. And the new covenant is the new wine, the new wine of the new covenant. The new covenant is the new wine skin. And the new wine is the Holy Spirit. It's grace. It's the spirit of life. It's the spirit of joy. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not a matter of food and drink, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom is joy in the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that in His presence there is fullness of joy. <laughs> the Bible says, don't be drunk on wine, but be filled with the Spirit. The first miracle that Jesus did was to turn water into wine at a wedding. <laughs> we thank you, Holy Spirit, for the new wine of the new covenant. This morning we drink. We drink of this wine. We drink of this new wine. People drink natural wine to help them forget their troubles. <laughs> but it gives them more troubles and headaches. <laughs> but when you drink of the, the wine of heaven, of the Holy Spirit, of the, the Spirit covenant, of the new wine of God, He causes us to forget our troubles, <laughs> to get through our troubles, to overcome our troubles, and to do it laughing. This morning, Lord, we drink the refreshing presence of the living God right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. So I want to encourage you this week to go out to lift up your eyes, to see heaven. When you feel things trying to come upon you and settle on you and cause you to look down and be negative and self-pity and oppressed and depressed, just don't accept that. Just refuse it. Say, no, I'm bigger and better than this. My God is so much greater than this. There is so much power inside of me, and it breaks off all of this. And just lift up your eyes and see heaven and eternity. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I wonder if you could, the final thing we're going to do, I just wonder if you could just place a hand on the person next to you, on their shoulder or on their arm, or just in a, in a dignified spot. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to pray for each other Jesus we thank you for your church we thank you church is your idea we don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. and just because there's some bad churches doesn't mean all churches are bad Lord we thank you for the church we honor the church your bride the church is your bride 
We don't want to speak ill of your bride. We speak words of grace and encouragement and love towards your bride. Now, brothers and sisters on the left and the right of us, God, we pray for them right now. Lord, we pray your strength come upon them. Your grace would fill them. Pray your refreshing, your presence, your goodness would minister to them. Lord, such a spirit of life would revive, revive them, reinvigorate them. Lord, we pray for heaven's perspective. Eyes on eternity. Eyes on the kingdom. Eyes on Jesus. We bless the person on my left and my right. We, I bless them right now in Jesus' mighty name. And I thank you for them. And I thank you for this church. Lord, we thank you for Caleb and Brooke. We bless them. We speak your strength and grace upon them, upon their health, upon their finances, upon their family, upon their household. We speak life, strength, grace, peace, goodness, favor. Lord, that this week you just overwhelm them with your grace and goodness. We bless them. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, bless you guys. Have a great week. <laughs>